As a product manager, you should feel very comfortable doing competitive analysis. You need to understand where your product fits alongside your competitors so you can build something that fulfills a unique market need. Until a few years ago, I was very much caught up in the idea that when doing a competitive analysis, you kind of want to focus on the product itself and the features that your product offers versus other products and how you can differentiate that way. Recently, I've been thinking about this a little bit differently and actually coming to terms with the fact that distribution when it comes to building your product is far more important than the features itself. So what we're going to be going through in this video is how to do a competitive analysis, but actually on the go to market side, not on the product side. So how to look at your different competitors understand how they're getting distribution of their product so you can either apply similar principles or serve an unmet need to get a unique advantage with your go-to-market strategy. So this is the template that I use to do competitive analysis on the go-to-market side and this is part of product management OS which I'll leave a description for below but we're going to go through everything step by step so you can replicate this uh, at no cost um, and yeah let's let's take a look. So imagine that we are launching a CRM platform and HubSpot is one of our competitors. The first step to do is just describe what they do. This is more for the good of the rest of your team, to be honest, you'll probably know this already. Uh, and then the next step is to just create a high level kind of plan of how this company is getting distribution of their product. So with HubSpot, they have the product themselves and within that they have a referral scheme and an affiliate program. So just kind of jot that down again, very high level. Then they have their media arm where they have kind of like a podcast network. They have a couple of podcasts in there that I've listed. And they also have a ton of kind of guides and eBooks that they use as lead generation strategies. Uh, and they even actually run paid ads for these products as well. And how I kind of go through gathering this is I'll literally just go on the HubSpot site. I might generate a site map, um, but usually I'll just kind of browse through the site and see what I can see. And as I'm doing that, I'm just jotting down these notes, opening up a mind map and putting things down, seeing how they all fit in. Probably take a couple of hours, but definitely worth the time. I'll also sign up to the different kind of freebies that they're giving away, understand the email flow. And with the ads, I'm uh, actually kind of usually going into Facebook ad library and understanding what kind of ads they're running. With Google, it's obviously easy. You can just Google the name, see if they're running Google ads. Um, but yeah, that's just like very high level how I'm just initially trying to understand how people are getting distribution of this. And it honestly shocks me like how many product managers I, I speak to that don't even go through this like first level when they're launching a new product and looking at their competitors. Because from this, you can unearth like so many like great nuggets uh, of ways that you could distribute your product. You know, if you come through this and you're like, oh, wait, they're giving away these like ebooks, let's like dig into that a little bit. How could we maybe do something similar? What kind of gaps aren't they filling? You know, how could we target our customers with something that's going to get an email address and then get them into the onboarding flow? Um, really is a really helpful ex exercise uh, to go to. And then after this, you can just kind of put a, a couple of notes. The next thing I'm always going to look at when I'm doing a analysis of a competitor on the go-to-market side is their similar web stats. So if you don't have the similar web plugin, 100% you need to install that. Again, like bread and butter for any product manager to have that installed. I use it every day. Uh, and what you're trying to do here is understand get a picture and this will come over time, but you're just trying to get a picture of like, right, what does this company look like? Where are their main levers of growth and customer acquisition coming from? And we can go through these in a little bit of detail. So this is an example from HubSpot. Over half of their um, traffic is coming direct. So that's people literally searching HubSpot in the toolbar. And this usually signals like a very strong brand. Uh, people know what they're looking for. They're coming in direct. It's a good signal that they have got good kind of brand affinity um, and is definitely a moat for HubSpot when it comes to their go to market. That is going to be very, very difficult for you to replicate as a startup or someone trying to compete with them. Then we have referrals. That's obviously like, you know, uh, affiliates, people referring them to the site, uh, organic search. So this would nearly always indicate good SEO. Um, this is people, you know, searching various terms that are then directing them to HubSpot. HubSpot have a pretty solid SEO strategy. Uh, then we have paid search. This is the amount of um, customers coming in through paid. 
it's just fairly low. Um, you wouldn't often see this too high for some businesses. It, it can get quite high. Uh, generally, if their paid search is high, this is actually a good indication for you um, because uh, it's not necessarily the most efficient way to scale, let's put it that way. Then we have social, kind of obvious, mail. Uh, so this is people coming through their mail. This will often indicate that they have a uh, kind of already existing fairly big client base, which is obvious to HubSpot. Um, and then display ads as well, kind of similar to paid search, but obviously like more banner ads. So this is just something that you will get a feel from doing it again and again and again. You know, generally what you're looking for, uh, if you, you know, a healthy, very healthy company, it's going to look something like this. So you've got high direct and high organic and kind of less reliant on the, on the paid. Um, and then, yeah, from here, you can kind of just pad out this and this will inform the SWOT analysis that you're going to do at the end. The next thing you're going to want to do is just really think about the target audience. Now, you might do this already as part of a normal competitive analysis, um, but I do like to just dig down on this in this specific uh, framework because it is just so important to keep reiterating to yourself like, OK, exactly what do our competitors audience look like? because this is going to help you when it comes to shaping your offering uh, to see how you could potentially get an in into maybe an unmet need or an audience that isn't being properly served by the competitor that you're analyzing. Uh, then go through the value proposition. Again, this is maybe not just purely focused on the go-to-market analysis, but very important to always have a top of mind so you know with hubspot it's all about them being like this kind of all-in-one platform to serve your b2b uh, needs so everything from lead generation to client management uh, to upselling uh, is included in their platform the next thing we want to go through is their marketing channels and what we're really doing here is just kind of digging in a bit more into any of these uh, things that seem interesting. Now, this is like a framework, right? But there is, and it, and it kind of is a process, but also it shouldn't be restrictive. Like if you find something interesting in here, you might go down a rabbit hole for hours and hours and hours, like purely on their podcast, uh, you know, set up and like, okay, like let's try and find the numbers of how many downloads they're getting. You know, how, what does that lead to in terms of upside? Like, okay, they're acquiring this company for like 10 million. Well, you know, they must be expecting a payoff that after three years. So therefore we can assume that this many people are, you know, subscribing to the HubSquad platform, or is it just a brand? play you know maybe they're just you know getting their brand out there you can start kind of going down this this rabbit hole the idea of this is to give you a framework to kind of get started with um, and within the marketing channels uh, you just kind of want to go through uh, all of the different things that you've, you've analyzed and then just put in screenshots put in examples uh, so here, this is an example of their kind of lead gen stuff where they give away all these uh, ebooks and workbooks and they've got hundreds of these for, you know, many, many different topics. Um, and then you can also talk about kind of offline stuff that they might do, partnerships. Again, it's going to be very dependent on the business that you're analyzing, but this is really just a chance for you to kind of dig into a bit more detail, uh, the kind of uh, high level hierarchy of um, that, you, that you've put out there. I also like to include even down to the detail of like the emails that they um, send. So here I can see that, you know, they, uh, they've they given me like a, a kind of onboarding email here or a, a sales email. Uh, and I will just like take a screenshot of that and put it in there. This should very much be a live document. If you're anything like me, you're signed up to all your competitors uh, email list. You're signed up to all of their socials. You're constantly like, you know, understanding what they're doing and stuff. Um, and this is a great place for you to just kind of put that stuff in there. The final thing you're going to do and the one that requires the, the most effort um, is to just do a SWOT analysis. And again, I've just done like a very basic one here to, to use as an example. But the main thing that you really want to be focusing on is like the weaknesses and the threats inversely to if you're doing your own SWOT analysis, where obviously you focus on everything, but um, it's really important for you to understand like after doing this go-to-market analysis, where are the weaknesses? Where are the chinks in the armor? Where are they perhaps not serving people that we could serve? Um, and you know, a big one with HubSpot is their pricing is probably prohibitive for a lot of smaller businesses. And also that all-in-one solution that happens when any software gets suitably big. You're seeing it with Notion now. Uh, you see it with uh, you know even Slack to an extent. That they 
kind of have to become a one product fits all, right? They have to be generic enough that anyone can use them. And I think often opens up space for either A, people who just want something that serves a smaller use case way more efficiently. Like if you're a startup and you just want like a very simple CRM, are you gonna use HubSpot? Probably not, you just wanna use something like very, very simple. Or if you have like a very specialized um, use case. So if you're, uh, I don't know, a dentist and you're looking for like a CRM, uh, are you going to use HubSpot? Maybe, but there might be an opportunity here for you to like create the HubSpot for dentists. Um, so that's just like one kind of example. Um, and then, yeah, you can just kind of go through this process yourself. So hope that wasn't too much of a ramble. Uh, we have got uh, a good process here that you can go through, but it should not be restrictive. Uh, there are no laws when it comes to product management that, you know, that just the important thing is that you're building something people want. And an easy way to not do that is to build something that's either exactly the same as your competitors or you're building something that's already been proven not to work. So I think that doing these go-to-market competitive analysis can be incredibly useful. And I do them every time I launch a major new feature or when I go and start work at a new company. So if you want this template, again, you can find it in Product Management OS in the description below, or you can take this framework and uh, work through it as well. Obviously in Product Management OS, we have like 15 or more other templates or with their own video guides, a load of AI stuff in here as well, like uh, AI product requirements that you can create and things like that. Um, yeah, really, uh, comprehensive system that I use every day. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for your time and see you next time.